and they're very blobby and shapeless looking. Um, I thought it was really fun to have a bit of creative freedom with this. And this, I don't know how many of you have seen what it really looks like yet. Um, no, we don't. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't remember what I was just talking about. Either way, when you finally see it, Martin Garrity is our character designer, and he's a genius, and he's incredibly humble, and so if you know, and he, he did an amazing time, and we wanted a bit of edge, and a bit of sinister underlay, but yeah, it was great not having something so selfish that we could be a bit more free with. And we, we have another clip which also doesn't feature the Faceless Ones. Not the two existing episodes of the Faceless Ones that don't include the Faceless Ones. Um, uh, so we're going to show, we're going to show the, the laser clip, which is uh, one you're particularly fun of, isn't it? Hello! It's a beam of light! No! Doctor, it's moving towards us! Slow moving laser beam of death. Do they escape? And that was Polly and Collins. That was Polly and Collins. Polly and Collins in the middle. Yeah. Because we asked Polly and Collins to join us uh, as a companion for the rest of the series. And she's, she turned Patrick and I and the BBC down. And what's she done since? On an Oscar. You know. And Benedict Cumberbatch's mum is in it. Yeah. That's right. Wanda Benson. Uh, so, Mark, your particular sound. We do have a. Is it, it's easier if we have your PowerPoint now. So we're, we're going to have Mark's uh, PowerPoint where he's going to talk us through uh, the sort of sound things, which is a technical term. Right, um, a lot of these obviously don't exist anymore, the, the soundtracks, because the BBC unfortunately threw out the original episodes. What we're very lucky is, quite extraordinary, from the very, very first episode, even before it went on, Doctor Who had fans who recorded the soundtracks off air to real to real tape. Um, this was one of the leading exponents of that. This was Graham Strong, who sadly died last year. Um, yes, absolutely. Give a round of applause. Um, and what Graham did was he actually set up a, a hardwired interface to his television so he got really fantastic uh, quality audio. And we're using his audio where we can because it really is the best source. This was a few weeks before he died where he invited me down to his house to ceremoniously hand over his master tapes. Um, so I've done yet more transfers of them all now since so I've looked after them. But things still turn up. This turned up uh, just last year. Three reels of tape um, found in a recycling centre somewhere in Essex, which is just extraordinary. Um, and as you can see, it was one of, one of three. That's number one. That's the back. Um, and as you can see, um, Doctor Who and the Daleks, episode one, The Nightmare Begins. So this is another recording. And this actually, some of those recordings of The Nightmare Begins beat the quality of the recordings we've already got, including Graham Strong, which is just, just, just remarkable. So I'm going to have to stand up because there's no one to speak down. Um, and that's one of the tapes, one of the Randolph tapes. So I have to transfer all those um, on a couple of extra real -to -real tape recorders, and they're all at very, very slow speed, so they, need, they take a lot of work to turn them into a master quality audio. Um, that is the Mac of Terror, that is remastering the original Mac of Terror for its, um, for its audio book release. And then it was tweaked like that. Um, for the Blu-ray and all the little lines there are some added sound effects and where, where, where things were slightly moved about. Um, Sharda was the biggest project we've done, that's the track later Sharda, um, which as you know was half animation and half, half Tom Baker, a, a half live recording, so every line is a different sound, background sound or a line of spot effect or whatever, um, and that was done as a movie. And there's a close-up of a bit in it, and those are the synthesizers I use when recording a score, so I was lucky enough to write a new score for that one. So, yeah, but we're really indebted to all these, um, all these folks who recorded these, these stories off air, because we couldn't do what we're doing unless we had all that, we really couldn't. Um, sorry we got distracted because my name was at the bottom, so I was just explaining to Russell that I was the announcer at the beginning of the Charter animation. Because I happen to be in the studio. You had a on, on, on your yeah, I know. It's probably the happiest moment of my life. <laughs> uh, uh, so, when it comes to... Because I'm really on to a particular Doctor Who aficionado. So, that's, it's that's an owl. It's, it's an owl. I, I've become very fond of them in my, the last four years working in the series. Especially Patrick Pyman. 
But you like his face, I take it, because... He's got a really, he's got a really elastic face, um, and he just pulls into incredible shapes. He's a real joy to have him, actually. He's got some brilliant expressions. It's all about the eyebrows, but it's proud. Um, so yeah, he's, he's a really eccentric character, and we try to bring that. We try to bring the personalities of the actors into the animation as much as possible. And again, it's down to Martin, the character designer, to capture the likeness of the original actors as well, and we try to bring that across it. My favourite character when you, ever, when you get to watch this is the Commandant and he just has this really supercilious, sneering sort of thing he, d he does every now and he's very disbelieving and cynical um, and we've got some brilliant animators on the team who've done some beautiful work with him. Bear in mind it's 25 frames per second where you're normally working on tubes which is about 12 or 13 drawings, sometimes 25 drawings for every second of animation you're watching. It's a very slow, tedious <laughs> way of working. Um, but it looks up to me. They've done some amazing. Well, and, and Gary, obviously, without giving anything away, because we're not so allowed to. But um, when when you come on board as the sort of the, the, the other team, did, did you ask the headhunter? Did you go with an idea of what you wanted to animate? How did you work out which projects to take? I, I did, no, you, you did. did. Did I? Did I? It's all my fault. Is it? Yeah. Okay. It's it wasn't this fault. one. Um, I think it would be a fight. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of went in with a sort of, here are all the ones I would like to do, and I said very loudly so that it would sort of sink in. Um, and they sort of very kindly went, there, there, Gary, yes, you sit quietly and do this one. That'll make you happy. So I went away very happy. But the practicality of the way that you do it is slightly different from from the other team. So how, how, what's your well, the, 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 the main difference for us um, is I, Six years ago, I moved to Australia uh, to run an animation series for the ABC over there. So, and that was with, with uh, Jason, uh, my business partner in, in Big Finish. And so we had a studio. And, and although we had downsized at the end of that show, so we didn't have the animators, we still had designers and we still had all our pre-production people. So, my, whereas Anne-Marie is so lucky because she has everybody at her beck and call on sensible times of the day, I have uh, my, my pre-production and my post-production teams in Australia, and then I have my animation team in India, and I have my co-producer in Los Angeles, and I spend my entire life on Skype, and occasionally I get to sleep. Um, and the joy of it is I also get to fly to Australia every so often and, and walk in and say, show me things, show me lovely things, and they show me lovely things, and then I bring them back to show you here today. Uh, which is why the next uh, animation uh, releases £50 per unit just to uh, pay for Gary's travel book. Uh, whereas Anne-Marie actually lives around the corner from me, so the DVD commentary of Sharda was done in my kitchen. Uh, so what, you know, we save the cash. Yes, yeah, you save the cash to, to, for me to fly to Australia. To, to Thanks. An, um, an amazing chef, I should point out, she makes curry. He's never made me curry. He's, he's, he's mean to me, he never makes me any food. Did you do the cook to Australia? Um, I did the cookbook as well, Toby. So we did do the cookbook. In your kitchen. Uh, uh, we did do the cookbook in my kitchen. Yeah. yeah. Your kitchen. And, and, in, and in his kitchen. Oh yes, in my kitchen. So we did the intros in my kitchen and your bit in your kitchen. Oh, you got bit which doesn't have a potato peeler in it. It's a very professional production. It is. It's a lovely kitchen. No, nobody has ever been to my kitchen. I am very upset by this. Well, I, I was about well, there's a DVD extra in, in the making there. Yeah. Somebody on Twitter said, I loved the Doctor Who cookbook thing because Fraser Hines has the same microwave as me. That's the only reason. <laughs> the only reason he loved it, I've got a red mic, is that was on Twitter. You can find it You've just made some of his life there, it, Fraser. It, it, it's just, that beautiful universal quiz. I know. I loved it because. Not because. And that begins that next time you do one with Fraser, as a little sort of Easter egg, you can put Fraser's mic in the background. If they're not invented, then. Oh, yeah. Now, we've all been told that we, obviously we can't uh, give away the names of any future animations uh, because we would be shot if we told you what they were. But we can do it through the medium of a teaser trailer. So, should we do that for the next one? Ooh. Ooh. It's Fury from the Deep.
say anything for the next minute while everyone is the first to put that on Instagram. But um, <laughs> oh, Fury from the Deep. They are all doing it. So, Gary Rock, it's Fury from the Deep. It is indeed Fury from the Deep. Woo! So, no pressure because everyone that ever talks to you goes, Oh, I bet Fury, we wish we had Fury from the Deep because I bet it's the best knocks who ever. And I'm sitting there going, Oh, God, we're going to have so many people go, Oh. Oh, you're going to do that, are you? That's nice. Yes, it's very, very exciting. Um, and lots of foam and lots of seaweed. And, uh, and so we call it Project Seaweed. Because that's just for dinner, it's for the deep. Because Project Seaweed wouldn't give anything away if we said that in public, would it? It's in colour as well. It's in colour and it's in black and white. You get that, the, the whole choice again. Oh, black and white or colour. Yes. Oh, or colour or black and white. It's amazing how many variations you can have. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? oh. So Fraser, having instructed you not to say the words Fury from and the Deep for the past three hours, you can now say as often as you like. What are your memories of Fury from the Deep? Oh, well, well I just I'm dying to see that because a lot of things that the family said we made up on the spot, so it wasn't in the script. Now we were walking along the beach. There's all this foam which cost like a thousand pounds to put it up, and Patrick and I looked at each other and we were telepathic by then. He looked at me, I looked at him, and we grabbed Deborah Bottom, rolled her into this hole, and she was kept, I'm just wondering, just let's have it back to me! And she kept acting on both, you know. And I'm, like, I'm just wondering, is that in Fury from the Deep, or is it? Oh, it wasn't. It was in the original, wasn't it? Oh, right. oh, yes. And because I've known you so well over the years and heard that story, when we were planned, when we were storyboarding it, I went, Patrick has to look at Fraser. Fraser has to look at Patrick, they both look at the phone, and then they scoop Deborah Watling up and don't bring the phone. It's all there. It's all there. Oh, well, marvellous, because in the back of terror there was something not in the script and it wasn't on the back of terror because the animator said it wasn't in the script, so we, didn't, we had to cut that bit out. No, so, every, every, everything, everything that exists sound wise and through from the deep is in the animation, including complicated shots of dunking people in foam. You have no idea how very annoying, and, and I, you probably already knew this, I really haven't taken for granted how very annoying foam is. <laughs> foam is. Foam is a pain, and you end up saying to, to the, the animation house in India, because every, everything with animation is done on separate layers, and so some shots you might have 15 different layers for backgrounds and action and actors and extras and all of this, they've all got on separate layers. And then you have foam, and every blob of foam has to have its own layer, because otherwise they, they, they hit bits of the set and suddenly disappear or go in front, or indeed go through bits of set, and you're looking at stuff and going, that's not on a separate layer, is it? I have to redo that, because suddenly a bit of tendril has gone through a wall or something. Um, it's, it's a lovely experience working with animated foam, I recommend it to no one. Why you shut up? Hold the phone. Hold the phone. <laughs> could, could we pretend you'd be on water? And, 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 and Mark, what about <laughs> you? Have you any specific uh, problems or, or. Well, I've yet to find out. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> basically, what I do on the animations is I quickly, very quickly, revisit the previous restorations that I did for the audio books, provide those as a reference track which the animator and the animator to, and then nearer the end of the process, I get it back, and I will do a new restoration, a smarter restoration, and make any little tweaks that are required, um, if, you know, anything taken out or added, or, you know, you may need a little extra sound effects to help tell the story, because as Anne-Marie says, animation is a very different medium, the whole pacing of animation is very different, although we, we try and stick as close as possible to the original, Occasionally, you just need to give it a little push. Um, so I'll be doing that at the last moment. Um, um, I'm doing five point one theory. That's what you told me. Yes. Well, I didn't know whether you had done. You, you said you never looked at the budget last year, but yeah, three people will probably have five point one. I mean, this is the extraordinary thing. Well, sort of committed to it now. <laughs> well, sort of now. So that's what I said. Well, that's pretty committed. Yeah. 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 But it is again going back to those soundtracks which were recorded at sub cassette quality in people's living rooms in the 1960s, we're now getting, I mean, parallel para like 11 cinemas all over the world. I mean, it's just ridiculous what we're trying to do. Um, but it's an absolute joy, it really is. Can, can I just say that, uh, 
watching that clip of, of Faceless Ones, and I also remember watching Macrotera on, on Tiny Blue Day, Blu-ray. And I've got to say, the sound, the, the work you've done on the sound, it sounds like it was made yesterday. It does not sound like it was made 60 years ago. It is phenomenal. And it, it's just beautiful. It's, it, it's a joy to do. I mean, you know, I, I um, you know, like you, to an extent, I grew up watching this guy and when we were kids. And um, it's a joy to be working on it now. And I, I was lucky enough to work on it in the 80s and I'm writing it. Thank you very much. Improvise it, you see, off script. Um, no, and then lovely to work on it, and now to be revisiting it like this and, and doing stuff. And, you know, I, I want to make, I think mean, we all do, we all want to make a product we want to buy. And that's, 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 that's our starting point, and our finishing point, really. I just I noticed, Toby, while Mark was telling the previous story, those 45 people on their phones, it's fury from the people. <laughs> they're all on their phones, fury from the people. Everyone has to be a first, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, internet superhighway, mate. Um, Gary, you've, um, you've got, we're indebted to some uh, very uh, helpful technical guys at the back who've got something that you're going to talk us through. You've got some clips and things. Yes, yeah, so um, what, what have we got for this? We've got the three clips or have we got the slideshow first? Ah, well, no, 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 we, so you, we, we, we thought you were going to talk us through, but then I trust them to do whatever well, you want. Was. They hit play and I'll talk about what we see on screen. How about doing it that way? How exciting. Right, so this is this is my slide. Um, I'm not sure why there's music all of a sudden. Um, and uh, so that's Robson, Chief Robson. That's Mr. Van Lutchens, the Dutch uh, designer. There's poor old Mr. Harris, whose wife is perpetually ill. And there she is, Maggie Harris, complete with seaweed. Uh, doesn't look very well. Mr. Oak. One of the best villains in the history of Doctor Who, and his best friend, Mr. Quill. Uh, they are fantastic fun right? There's Megan Jones, um, very powerful woman in the 60s Doctor Who, it's quite interesting. These are the guards, there's a nice little Esco logo. That's our, our uh, height chart for everyone. Let's raise a hind to the mask on. Um, I thought it was important that he saw his normal knees. That's the ring oh, for the shouting, on. you can see how it falls apart. There's some seaweed. This is this is uh, Alex, our concept designer. This is her seaweed designs. Um, uh, this is the sonic screwdriver, which makes his Whoa. first ever appearance in Fury of the Deep. This is some beach, and that's the foam. That's easy foam, because that's Dan's painted foam. Dan Carr, our, our brilliant background painter. This is an early uh, CG rough of the refinery. Uh, this is the inside of the refinery control room. I've given you four shots of this, because I'm rather proud of it and uh, why not? Um, so this shows how everything, because in the original it all took place in there, we've put new sets in. There's the room going through to the impeller room, and there's the impeller room. So that's the impeller lifts up like something from Empire Strikes Back. This is the pipe room that the weed will break through in episode six. The Harris's apartment, very 60s, 70s chic. And there are some people being attacked by seaweed, I don't know who they are. And the end of episode five, that's a concept, artwork for Ending Episode 5 and that's what it's really going to look like because I wanted to go a little bit darker and a little bit more uh, evil. You were, you were talking to, to Anne-Marie about um, how things change and, and, and the changes we can make. Fury from the Deep is a scary story so I wanted to ramp it up a bit and make it a bit darker and a bit creepier and that's the joy of animation is, is we could, I mean I, I worked on the moon base and we were slavishly sticking to the tele snaps and the, and the camera scripts for that. And that's all very well, but it's it's kind of not using animation to its full extent. So now, uh, because of what they did so brilliantly on Macro Terror, it's like, yes, we can open things up, we can make the sets bigger, we can actually create new sets, because originally everything was filmed in Studio D at Lime Grove, which is about the size of this stage. And we've kind of made our art studio probably the size of this room twice over. So everything has got much more depth. Everything feels much bigger and much more how they would have wanted to do it if they had the budget. And I think that's a very important thing with animation is you've still got the tele snaps, you've still got the audio, but animation allows you to go just without going mad, obviously, but it just allows you to go that tiny little step bigger and that tiny little step more exciting. So you don't change anything, you just enhance it. And I think that's, a, that's been a very important thing with the animations.
And do you, with Russell, with the direction that you give, do you have to bear in mind sort of different audiences for this in terms of the, the, some people who might want you to be slavish and some people who've never seen the original and, and never would? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I trust the experts in this field. But yeah, you're right. I mean, as I said before, I have moved. So what? I have moved. I have moved off the experts. And now you tell me. <laughs> um, no, I think, because like you said, we've shown uh, some of the other animations yeah, on BBC America and in cinemas, it's sort of got to suit that audience as well as the, you know, the core fans. So I think there's like a nice little medium to, to do, really. And how, 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 how far are you away from completing Faces by the time? I have 65 seconds of animation left to allocation in episode 6. So we're very much nearly there, we'll finish the animation in the next two to three weeks. Well, with corrections, so we're ahead of schedule. Oh, well done. <laughs> Doesn't mean everything can be wrong, obviously. Is it difficult to do the the checks on Patrick's trousers and the pulling of the tartan on my kilt? Is that difficult to do with the pulling? Um, mm -hmm. Your kilt is an absolute pain, but we have kept it, and you have tartan lines. Uh, tartan is not wearing uh, tartan trousers anymore. Because I remember Charles Norton saying that at the, the press conference from Terror, somebody said. You know, what about behind it? Because he said that would be particularly difficult to do because there's lots and lots of time. Yeah. So I nearly cried when I started working on power and was getting shots of uh, trout and dancing with the clouds. The only way to do it really is to do it hand drawn, but we had to produce like, I can't remember, like 30 seconds of animation in a day instead of at the moment I'm asking my animators to do four and a half seconds a day. It was an insane task and Tartan is not your friend. <laughs> That's not an picture. And what about sound-wise, Mark? You said we've had these new tapes through, but are there, are there any of the, the, the stories that are in particularly bad shape that we should be... Well, you mentioned the Highlanders, and the Highlanders' um, war was awful, but this Randolph tape we found, I think, might make it a possibility. Um, so, you never know. Um, yeah, we're filling in gaps, we're still filling in gaps, that's the extraordinary thing that takes to turn up. Um, but I'm delighted we're doing no fury, because that's one of the better soundtracks that exist and because I've also got the music tapes for that and the sound effects for that, that's why I can pick it to bits and put it back together in surround very easily, which we couldn't unfortunately do with Emily, which we don't have all the for, so um, yeah. The, the, the Highlanders as well, the, the kilt was not so much of a, a tarp, it was a very dark wraparound, so there's no pleats, so the, the Highlanders might be a good one to do. And, and once Bill Dysart was killed by, by the red coats, there's only Jamie and that's that's the only island they left until we go into the prison ship. Uh, and I said, it's old. Us and rowing. Fraser's volunteering you for a load of work there, but I don't know. I just love these casual until you go into the prison ship. So that when you go into the prison, there's 30 people in time. They all still have to be drawn into the ship. Rowing. I'll tell you a, can I tell a story about the prison? We were in this prison ship, but we were in water. And all, we get shipped off to Australia. And there was a rat, a stuffed rat, and kind of, ah, oh, there's a rat! And they pushed the prop and pushed this rat in, in rehearsal. So I had to work with the wardrobe, and on the final dress rehearsal, this rat came through, he was on his back with little black sunglasses and the swimming trunks on. And this little rat came, and who, who did, whose idea was that? It can only be yours, can it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying nothing. And, and that's the sort of anecdote that would be an honour making of if such a thing were to be done. And it means the, the animations give us a chance to do um, documentaries on stories that we haven't got documentaries on yet. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we have, courtesy of Chris Chapman, who's sitting in the front row, if you want, to, if you want to kiss him, uh, we have a, a teaser for a forthcoming, uh, I'm hoping, uh, for, the, for, the, for this. Let's have a look.
was brilliant and he gave me all the drone footage that they shot from that so that my design team could actually get all the sea forts and all the beach stuff and actually everything spot on and perfect and so thank you Chris because that was a god save. Well done, well done, well done, yes, I've, I've got, I just thought we, we could end if you wanted to with uh, three very short clips uh, from View from the Deep. They are in varying stages of uh, non-completion uh, because you know, we're a long, we, we started six, seven months after um, Faceless Ones. So um, have a look at these. They're, they're very short and they're a mixture of animatic storyboards and finished animation and even occasionally a background. Have a look at these. It's seaweed, scary seaweed. That's the first one. I just wanted you to see a bit scary to see So then, I my test at the You won't just stay here, nothing will do with the first man. What's the matter, sir? You're scared that I could move on. No, you go ahead. Really? You better have something more than I've learned here, because if you have, I'm going to take you and chop you up in little pieces and throw you back to your crummy little university. All right? And then finally, Design team saw Victor Madden and I showed them the telly snaps and some photographs. They love drawing him. It is just got a brilliant face for animation. Yeah, bam, straight away. I'm glad you think so. Did you, did you see any? Did you see a little bit of you there? You were you happy with yourself? No, I, you, know, you were very young. You, you made him look attractive, which you know. Which you are. Well, well. well. <laughs> Well, look, uh, that's, we've got 30 seconds left, so if this panel is going to be nothing else, it's going to be punctual. So, uh, uh, what can we expect from the future of the range? For animations? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, everyone seems to like them so far, I, I think. Uh, which is able to carry on. I think we're getting better and better, actually, as well. Um, so, yeah, as long as people keep enjoying them and supporting the range, hopefully we'll do some more. Well, please show your appreciation for Russell Minton. Woo! Gary Russell. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Toby, as well, for keeping us in check.